Today's word is stupendous. You need some encouragement. We really, really love listening to you guys. You need some inspiration. Love your podcast. Wonderfully inspiring as I think about my marriage. I'm the person in your world that you feel like you can be the most authentic with. In, uh, in that... That doesn't encourage me. That means I am <laughs> I'm most selfish with you. You're listening to the Stupendous Marriage Show. Hey there, welcome to the Stupendous Marriage Show. I'm Stu Gray. Hey, I'm Lisa Gray. You gotta love when you start a podcast and you have neighbors that start cutting down trees at the same time. <laughs> it's fun, good times. I was like, what is that sound? <laughs> it sounds, can we record? I don't know. And I walked, I couldn't figure out where it was. I mean, I really thought- <laughs> Did you like, run out front and look? I, I did, I looked out yeah. front There's and I didn't see there. anything. And then I'm like, and he, you said, oh, it's probably behind us and- so then I looked out back and I was like, yeah, they're doing tree something or... Yeah, so if you hear weird sounds, we're okay. Yes. Don't be alarmed. Not cutting anybody's <laughs> legs off. <laughs> it's just the tree people behind us. Yes, we have this big creek and we have lined trees, mm-hmm. you know, between our houses and the houses that are across the creek and some people have decided to take them down. Yes, hopefully none of ours are close to us, but <laughs> it will be what it will be. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. I'm good. You know, it has been a little bit of a rough season in our world. It seems like for like a month now, just off and on, we have just keep kind of going around the mountain. And um, and so I'm very grateful for good days, days that are positive and that we like each other. And it's been nothing large that we've been going around the mountain about, or so it seems. It's just been life. I feel like I've cried more in the last month than I have in several years in our marriage. <laughs> that sounds so bad, like I'm making you cry. <laughs> For the record, I'm not making you cry. It's usually revelation, right? Is it usually things that you're like realizing that's making you cry? Would you say that? Uh, yeah, you know, layers of hurt and brokenness and my own problems and life and not dealing with things well or correctly and... You know, God has wired it where we hear from each other, and if you're not open to hearing from your spouse, (laughs) that can be a problem, and you know, if you don't realize that sometimes God speaks to you through your spouse, that can also be a problem, but then when he does show up and something just kind of hits you between the eyes, it's like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. I've told people that I did like cartoon crying, you know, where the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the teardrops are like flying off of my face. If you can imagine any type of cartoon crying, that's what I felt like a couple times in this past month. So it's been, you know, good times, good, good times. <laughs> great, great. I just want to say, don't shoot the messenger. That phrase came to my head because I know the Lord does at times give me just things that I say to you that then are pretty impactful. Just the theme of selfishness in my life has apparently come to a head, and I keep hearing about that from you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, honestly, I think I'm the person, as it should be, I'm the person in your world that you feel like you can be the most authentic with. And so in in that... That doesn't encourage me. That means I am... (laughs) I'm most selfish with you. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I mean. Great. Fabulous. That makes me feel wonderful. No, 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 no. I didn't mean like that. What I'm saying is, so, you know, we get to see each other in the most raw places, mentally, physically. That's true. I mean, you were in the labor and delivery room with me when we had our son. You know what I mean? So you've seen I me. I still think we should have gotten a discount. <laughs> yes, you helped quite a bit. You've seen me in a way that nobody else has in my life that I'm in a relationship with. And that physically, obviously, and then also there's been times that I've had those kind of cries and you've been the person who's been there with me going through it. And so I hate that in this time that for whatever reason it's come out where you feel like you're really struggling in that area. And I've been a part of that conversation, but I'm so excited to see you growing and hopefully moving past and finding freedom in it. I mean, the Lord has just done so much in this past month and it's been really hard at times and then also i feel like so much is coming in the positive way this is kind of a generic hard conversation i mean we're not like we haven't told any specifics about anything that's been happening i mean there have been conversations about work that have been difficult there have been conversations about past problems like pornography that have come up and lust and not feeling worth anything and identity and all of these things that we have touched on that have you know, triggered all these different little things. And so 
even in getting closer to 20 years of marriage, we still have these conversations and God is still growing us and still weaving us together and we're still becoming one flesh. You know, we're still having the dance and trying to figure things out and not work perfectly at it. I mean, I tried to do something for Mother's Day, which I screwed up, and I told my son, hey, make sure you tell your mom Happy Mother's Day. And I made sure that I said that to him, and then I said to said it to him at bedtime, hey, did you tell your mom Happy Mother's Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you turn around the day afterwards like, you never said Happy Mother's Day to me all day long on Mother's Day. I'm like, holy crap. You know, how can I blow that? And I well, just, and there were other things going it. on. You well, were not feeling well. I mean, it yeah. wasn't like you were just maliciously. Not I'm just doing saying that. that yeah, that is a stupid one to miss. So sorry publicly. <laughs> I already said it privately. <laughs> sorry publicly <laughs> for missing that one. You know, I'm grateful that most of my Mother's Days have been really great and and wonderful. And that's not the case for a lot of our holidays. Holidays are not great for us usually. Unfortunately, you know, overall, I think. Holidays put so much pressure on everybody to perform, whether it's to entertain in our home or to provide presents or whatever the case may be. And so I'm grateful that we got past it. And I do completely forgive you for that and just look forward to Father's Day right around the corner. And talking about holidays, oh, that is what our email is about today. So we'll get to that in just a minute. This week, the Stupendous Marriage Show is powered by the Lake Tahoe Couples Getaway. It's an amazing opportunity for you and your spouse to get a little time by yourself together to hang out in a beautiful resort in Lake Tahoe. Yeah, you get to go for four days, three nights, and it's on the waterfront resort located in Tahoe. I think it's the only waterfront resort in that area. Recently added to the weekend are our friends Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo from One Extraordinary Marriage. Plus, Mark Gunger will be there, Brandon Heath doing worship, and lots of other good stuff. You are going to have an amazing time. While you're there, you'll get to do lots of fun activities like going ice skating together, hiking, skiing, even ballroom dancing. And for our listeners here at the Stupendous Marriage Show, enjoy $100 off your reservation right now at TahoeCouplesGetaway.com slash stupendous. The retreat starts at just $499 a person, which is a great price for a marriage retreat. So with that $100 discount, man, it makes it so affordable. TahoeCouplesGetaway.com slash stupendous for all the details. Here's our email for today. Hey, Stu and Lisa. Love the show. Please continue to keep up the great work encouraging couples. Thank you. My husband and I have been married for almost nine years. We have two kids. One of the issues we keep having in our marriage is how to deal with the in-laws during major holidays. My mom and my husband's parents all live within about 30 minutes or so from each other. Problem is, every holiday we're expected to always do two separate celebrations. It's really started to affect our marriage. My mom does not like my husband's parents and refuses to go to their house or share any holidays with them except for the kids' birthdays. My husband's parents have invited my mom over to their house several times, but she refuses to go. For example, Mother's Day. We had mom come over to our house to celebrate, and then after she left, we then went to my husband's parents' house. It can be very exhausting for us to always have to do this. It's causing fights between my husband and I because my husband feels like my mom is always trying to control the situation and that his own parents always have to come second to my mom. I agree with him, but mom is 73 years old. She's single, and she's not the type of person who can or is willing to be flexible. Additionally, mom is good at giving a guilt trip if things don't go her way. This year, my husband says he's finally putting his foot down that I need to tell my mom that when Thanksgiving comes, either she celebrates with everyone or she can choose to stay home. I feel very torn in this situation, feel that I should honor my marriage and respect my husband, but at the same time, I don't want to disappoint or upset my mom, especially since she is all alone. Any advice you could give would be greatly appreciated. Oh, goodness. The fun of in-laws and getting married and leaving your parents and figuring that out. Yes. You know, we really had a lot of that early in our marriage. Yes. Where it was very hard to remember kind of which hat you had on. You know, we would go and spend time with your family and it was like you would revert back to being a kid. And I'd be like, hello, what about me over here, your wife and our child? And so I completely relate to that part of it and trying to navigate... 
I think, unfortunately, a lot of people, especially in our generation, tend to accommodate everybody wanting to be everywhere. But we're so used to being busy, busy that our kids go, go, go and all these activities and we're always doing stuff and we're doing three jobs and starting our own businesses that when it comes time for holidays, it's easy to just continue to do that. Let's just go, go, go. We'll go here for a day and go there for a day and and not ever thinking about what your family unit needs. Because the thing is, yes, she is still your mother, but she is no longer your primary family unit. You have now, the Bible says, we're supposed to leave our parents and cleave to our husbands and wives. And so you have now left that unit and you're now in a different unit with your husband and your two kiddos. What is best for that unit? And setting that boundary can be one of the hardest things we do as adults. In different relationships in your life, you can think of like a target or like the target logo. Okay. And so for the majority of our life, Our parents are in that primary center area, right? They're the main target and you're in there with them. When you get married, your spouse comes into that primary target area and your parents have to move out to a further rung or a a certain one of the further circles out. So they're still part of your life. They're in your bigger target, Mm -hmm. but they're not the center point of your life anymore. They're not your focus. And so you need to get with your husband. It sounds like after nine years, he's kind of done. And I get that. And his parents can't be the center of focus either. It needs to be you guys absolutely working it out together how you want to go forward. Yeah. Not based on, well, his parents feel left out. Well, my mom doesn't do anything. Mm-mm. No, it's based on how do we want to accommodate this in our life? And that sounds selfish. It's just a reframing, a rethinking of the prioritization of your relationship and your family, not saying that they're less important. They are not. They're super valuable, super important because they are your parents and you do want to honor them and love them as best they can. But they have to make their own choices based on what you guys are going to do for your family that is the healthiest and wisest for you guys as a unit. Absolutely. I think it goes back to you've now changed seats on the bus. You know, you are now sitting with your husband and your kiddos And you have to nurture and take care of that family unit first and foremost. And then secondly, honor your parents. But at the end of the day, they are adults. They can make their own decisions. You cannot control them. You cannot manipulate them. And they should not control or try to manipulate you. My question is, could you host holidays? Could all the parents come to you? Could you have it at your house and basically say, hey, this is a safe environment. This is our home. How about everybody coming to us so that everybody's a little bit more comfortable? If that's not an option at the end of the day, I wonder if they could take turns hosting stuff. His parents host one thing. Your mom hosts something else if you don't live close to them. But where you are right now and what you've been doing and trying to keep everybody happy is just not a good place for you. It's not a good place for you with your relationship with your mom. And it's not a good place for you with your relationship with your husband or your in-laws because they probably feel uncomfortable by the whole situation as well. Here is a definition of codependency. Codependency describes a pattern of problematic behaviors in relationships. People who are often codependent end up rescuing and caretaking significant others, often at their own expense. People struggling with codependency are often numb to their own needs and feelings, and they don't communicate well to others. So who's codependent in this relationship? Is it you who wanting to please everybody? Is it your mom who wants to get her worth or value from manipulating everybody around her? Definition of codependency from Merriam-Webster is a psychological condition or relationship in which a person is controlled or manipulated by another who is affected with a pathological, quote unquote, condition such as an addiction or heroin or something else. Broadly, it's dependence on the needs of or control by another. So codependency happens when, well, you try to please everybody, Mm -hmm. where you lose yourself in what does everybody want from me? What does everybody need? And what is every, I've got to do this for mom because this is going to hurt her feelings. You lose yourself. In that, And that's what codependency is. You lose yourself in placing everybody else above 
healthy needs for yourself and your family. Something you said at your email is your mom will go for the kids' birthdays to your husband's parents' house. So she can do it, right? right? right. She has done it. She's just choosing not to for other holidays. I definitely don't think that your husband's parents should host everything. I don't think that in a million years, even if that means having a neutral place that you host stuff. That's where I was going. Neutral, neutral. Yeah, go somewhere neutral. A lot of hotels have great family areas that you can. Conference rooms. Conference rooms. And it might sound cold, but there's actually some that are very nice and very cozy. Absolutely. A lot of neighborhoods have clubhouses. Like, is there somewhere neutral that you guys can go? Could you open up the celebrations? Like, we do Thanksgiving Because we have such a small family that's here locally, we do Thanksgiving and we invite a whole bunch of other people that don't have family around them. So could you open up your house or maybe your in-laws open up their home to invite a lot of different people instead of just making it about close family? I can make it less threatening, I guess. So you don't have to sit and have those awkward conversations with only the other (laughs) in-laws. Yeah. Well, and my question would be is what is her problem with them? Is her problem really something that they're doing or is it more about her and her wanting to control? This is the deal. You love your mom and that is so amazing. So give yourself just a pat on the back, some grace for the fact that all these years you have been trying to do your best by her and honor her. And that is so good. Just realize that it may be the time that there has to be a change for you personally and your mom and her relationship with you. And then also for your husband and your kiddos to be able to have a little bit more stability on the holidays and not going 25 different places. We had to have a hard conversation with in-laws. It's like, look, we are a family now. We are married and we want you guys in our life. We want you guys in our life. And We're going to do this for our marriage and our family going forward. Are you going to be part of that? Yes, this is tough and this is a shift and this is a change. We feel this is the most healthy for us. Love you. Want you to be part. You're always welcome in our life and we want to be part of your life. It's just going to look different. Mm -hmm. And having that tough conversation, and it is a tough conversation, but there is awesomeness on the other side of it. Because after the shift happens, everybody realizes... There's no expectations or unmet expectations. Everybody knows kind of what's going to happen going forward. They may not like it, but they've gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes part of life. It becomes the new way to celebrate or do whatever party that you're going to do after you've had that tough conversation. It's not going to be easy. Oh, sure. It needs to be something that you and your husband are on the same page, going the same direction, standing side by side. And you're going to have to probably have a conversation with both sets of grandparents, oh, yeah. with your mom and oh. his parents to say, this is now what we have decided we need to do as a family unit. We love you guys. and But at the end of the day, you can't control them. If she decides to sit at home by herself on Thanksgiving, that is her decision. And she has to live with that. You don't cause that. It's not your fault. It is her choice. And she is the only one that is responsible for that decision. And she's going to miss out on some amazing turkey. (laughs) Exactly. Thank you so much for sending us the email. Please let us know how it goes. And if we can encourage you more with the conversation, we are glad to do that. Again, if you've had to have this conversation with your family members and reframing your marriage and family, how did you do that conversation? We can talk about it on Facebook, Stupendous Marriage Show. Look for us there. Or Instagram, Stupendous Marriage. Or on Twitter, at Stupendous Duo. And we'll talk to you next time. See ya. Yeah. Like the show? Like the show? Yeehaw. Share the podcast. Tell Tell another couple. Hold on. Hold up. Was that okay? That's fine. So you need to talk about it in the past. Okay. I did not understand. Yes. Of what you were speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Or share any holidays with them except for the kids' birth. (laughs) Burp. Once again, with feeling. My mom does not like my. my, (laughs) I need to cough on. (coughs) I said unit. (laughs) Okay, let's start over. Yeah. Like the show? Like the show? Share the podcast. Tell tell your married friends. Yeah.